Welcome again friends. Welcome to another video lecture from Shomu's Biology. We are talking about the different types of polymerase chain reaction and in this video we will be talking about a variety of PCR known as the inverse PCR. Now there are different variations of PCR based on the functionality that we want to achieve. Inverse PCR is, is one of such variety. When we want to find out uh, the amplification of a DNA which we don't know the specific region or specific target of the sequence. Now normally for any PCR reaction we need to know the sequence of the target DNA we want to amplify because we want to design the primer based on that target DNA. The primer is complementary to the target DNA. But what happens if the primer that we want to design, if, 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 the, if the target DNA that we want to amplify, we don't know about that DNA, we don't know the sequence of that DNA. In that case, we need to rely on inverse PCR for the amplification of those DNA we don't know the sequence for. So let's look at the process of how we actually design primers of even unknown DNA. Now for this process to work, we need to know at least one segment of the, of the whole part of the DNA for this to work. Let's say here, this is the complete fragment of the DNA and among this DNA, there are segments that we know, some part of the DNA sequence we know, some part we don't know. Let's say most of the part we don't know and we want to amplify that unknown portion of the DNA. Now the thing is, if we don't have any clue at all about the sequence of the DNA, we cannot rely on inverse PCR to amplify. Now for inverse PCR to work, we need to know at least some part of the DNA content, even if it's in the, in the side regions or in the inside middle region of the target DNA. Now let's say here, this part which is colored red here, this is the portion, this sequence is known to us. Rest of the sequences are not known. Now as the flanking region sequences are not known, we cannot make any primer based on that. So what is the way to make primer and amplify? Without the primer, we cannot amplify the DNA. So the best option here is to join the terminal region of this linear DNA and make a circle and then cleave the DNA from the known region. How it will work? Let's look at it. So what we do, we do a milder treatment with exonuclease enzymes that will cleave this DNA from the terminal regions and generate overhang. We can also use restriction enzymes for that. Once the overhang is generated, then what we want to do, we want to ligate both the end of the target DNA. Both the end of this DNA strands should be ligated properly. So let's say here they are ligated. After the ligation is complete, we have a circular DNA. And among this circular DNA, there is a little part which was known from the beginning. Now what we do, as this middle part is known, we can use a restriction enzyme to cleave uh, from that known region of the DNA. So use that restriction enzyme and upon treatment of the restriction enzyme, it cleaves uh, from this known target region. And as it cleaves, both the strands are uh, like cleaved and this DNA becomes linear again. But in this case, the linear DNA have a different type of feature. Now the regions at the terminal part are known to us and the unknown region comes to the middle. So now as the terminal portion of the DNA is known, we can design primer against it and we can do the amplification of the all whole length of the DNA that is present in the middle. Then we design the primer it will separate those DNA strands from each other. These are the known segment at the end point. And we design the primer. The primer will be annealed. Let me take another color here. Primer will anneal and it will produce new strands over there. Okay. That's how the new strands will be produced. And that's how we can amplify all this unknown portion of the target DNA. But again, as you see, for this process to work, you need to know some part of the DNAs uh, as, as a sequence or known. Now what are the uses of this inverse PCR? It is commonly used to identify the flanking sequences around the genomic inserts. And also the inverse PCR has numerous applications in molecular biology including the amplification and identification of the sequences flanking by the transposable elements. 
and also uh, for uh, identification of different sort of genomic inserts uh, that will be very important to understand about several different uh, genetic disorders and diseases. So that in a sense is inverse PCR. I hope this video helped you out. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that. Thank you.